The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi folks, Tuesday the uh, 18th of April and we're looking at the Dow down 113, 33,873. Let me just check. I think I can see it here. Uh, I, I I don't know how updated it is. So Apple's, up to, Apple's up a little bit. So Goldman Sachs is down eight. That's one of the big movers to the downside. Uh, I guess it's weighted, so yeah, so that makes it important. And Amgen is down sharply, but the others are doing quite nicely. Yeah, so this is really very selective right now, but we're looking at the Dow, down 126 to 33,861. In the Chapman Wave methodology, what I'm always looking for is from an identifiable low bar, and you've got to go look to the left side to make sure that you've got the low bar correct. From the right side, as the low bar, the next bar makes a higher low, that starts your trough that you can start a wave count. So in this case, from 31,000, 429 on the 15th of March, uh, we've been um, looking at peak A. And what do I like to see? I like to see higher highs. I alphabetize them sequentially. A, the next higher high is leg B until it makes a peak B. Then it goes to leg C to peak C, then D. It can go all the way to a G. But at D, the fourth highest peak, that's where other things can happen. So we've achieved that. We've done it in the time sequence, we've missed it. We haven't quite got to the 34,331 level yet, which is the high at peak D on the 14th of Feb. But, and we haven't got it in price. So this is missing. And I do not, I do not like to see peak Ds that fail under a previous major high. Why? It just says you haven't got enough strength. I love to see a leg C fire away right through that left side high that would be above 34,331 and that says you this is really a powerful buy mode it's going to help the weekly chart in this case it's the daily it'll help the the weekly chart and the weekly will help the monthly well we have stalled right at the resistance look at the uh, and that was and the little tiny candle yesterday I said to subscribers expect a, a very a small candle and now we're looking at bumping up against the inside track repellent zone in the weekly chart. So I was asked if I would look at the um, weekly charts. Uh, what, was the, what was the statement? Where am I? Can I find it? So I'm going to go back down here. What was the exact question? All right, I don't think I'll find it quick enough. Yeah, okay. But uh, uh, There it is. Uh, hi, hi, Basil. Uh, what is, oh, great assessment on daily charts. Can you please do a weekly review of the diamonds, the spy, the cues on your show today? Yeah, so um, yeah, what we're looking at is we're bumping in the weekly chart. The MACD has finally turned up. Remember, I said this rectangle was a little messy, but basically I had to stick with the rectangle, which is right here, saying that we've gone from a rectangle to a cup potential cup formation, and we've... Let me just do it quickly for those of you who you know Chapman Wave methodology. We pull back sharply. We made the arch formation. Uh, and in this particular instance, I'll go here. And I'll show you what we're looking at. So the patterns I look at, straight line, up or down, cup formation, arch formation. Those are the core uh, trends that we look at. And if there's a very sharp pullback and it makes an arch formation at a peak A or a B and then fails and tags out that left side low, be careful because that can go quite a lot lower. On the right side, it's a reverse Y green because if you take out the left side high, you can go a lot higher. What do I look for? I look for an identifier low bar, count each successively higher peak. When you get to the fourth highest peak, even though you can go to E, F, and G, D is where other things can happen. We saw, look right here in the corner, you can see uh, at, on the 14th of Feb, peak D, look how far we plunged to the downside. So within that context, what we've got here is another pattern where I look at straight line up, then you start to make lower highs and much lower lows, and all of a sudden you form a base. And it takes out that trend line that that. I call it the falling X, but it's really an expanding cone to take out that higher trend line. 
that means you can go all the way back to the previous high. So with all that said, what do we have? We have a whole combination. There's the falling axe. There's the dreaded H, the arch that fails at a peak B, B, went to a doji candle low. Nice move up. Uh, all of these we've been trading on the long side and actually a little aggressively on the long side. Now we've lightened up to the point where uh, we, at peak D, we always want to lighten up. We are prepared to go short at some point in the next day or two. It should have maybe been, to, been today. I don't know. But you're bumping up against that resistance. And now we've got the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone holding the price. If this is going to work, then by the uh, May, the week of the 19th, we should be testing 34,331 if the cup formation is going to hold in place. Um, and here's the monthly chart, falling axe formation. We're in the inside track repellent zone. How does it break out? That's going to be very important. Now let's just run the, so the support level will be 33,700. Nine period moving average will be key support. Then 33,522, the next level of key support. But it's the upside that I'm looking at. If there's going to be a rally above 34,082, you've got a ton of resistance to break to try to get to the 34,331 level. And if it can go higher than that, That'll be really important because it'll help the monthly chart. But in the meantime, we're in this thing where I say to subscribers, let's have a little bit of caution here. Let's look at the S the uh, S and P. So the weekly chart says, in the Dow, the S the Dow says, uh, yes, the technicals are improving. The stochastics only at 68, but it is improving. On balance volumes very weak. So this is a period where I, I say just be a little careful. Looking at the uh, S and P, you've got the same sort of thing, slightly different chart formation uh, all it needs is to get to 4196 uh, so 4195.45 and that'll go to leg D this is holding much better look it did go I don't like a, a peak E and a very quick F after that although it could turn into an instant restart uh, or a brand new buy mode F slash B but MACD is good nine period is over the 14 the price is way over the nine uh, all of them are way above the 14 and the 50, uh, 200 period moving average and the, and the 50. I didn't want to do any shorting right now because there is still internal strength. Stochastics at 91%. MACD is good. On balance volume holding okay. Weekly chart says a cup formation should try over the next couple of weeks to break to a leg D and that'll push us finally out of that monthly chart resistance. Very important. I've got FIB numbers. Uh, at the 4200 level, there's all sorts of things going on. But all I can say is that key support will be 4100. So first 4115, 4100 will be next. And if it goes under 4100 in April, that's a big problem. But in the meantime, we're looking at potential. Uh, how this how this plays out is going to be very important. We're at a kind of a cuspish moment right now. QQQ is slightly different again. There's a cup formation that hasn't been able to break above the high that was, maybe it did. 321.42 was the high today. 321.63, missed it so far by about 25 cents, making a new leg E. And we can to onto a leg G slash C. And here's the same thing, that if the uh, QQQ the X100 trading vehicle is able to get about 34.42 in April. That will be very positive because it will be helping the technicals of the chart, which are still very strong, get even strong. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 118, and then I'll show you something here with the E mini. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. 
These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so I need to look at uh, uh, Merck in a moment, uh, FXI, uh, SBSW, and I will. But I just wanted to show you something uh, that I think is kind of cool. Um so in the Chapman methodology, I have a whole thing going on with rectangles. So either it's a large rectangle or it's an, a narrow, very long, narrow channel. And I have a, a, in my, in my if, if you're um, subscribed to my opening call, if you are a member of my opening call, you'll be able to go to my webinars. And I discuss these over and over. So the long, re narrow rectangle and the large rectangle have two different connotations. The long, narrow rectangle says you can stay within this range and keep thinking that you're going to break to the top every time you think, oh, this is the breakout. It doesn't happen. It pulls back. You think it's going to break down. It doesn't happen. Then at a certain point, it actually goes to a peak D, E, or F above the line. If that gets back, to a halfway marker of the rectangle, in other words, a diagonal line, a horizontal line, takes it out, there's a real good chance, not only are you gonna take out the low of the rectangle, finally, but you will go quite deeply below it. Then what happens is you try to get back in. If you get back into the rectangle, but you can't take out the, the diagonal line, then that's like a barrier. All right, wait a minute, what's all that talk about? That says, look at this. The E-mini from, wow, let me scroll back. I love this kind of thing. It's just incredible how it happens over and over and over and over. Has been in a kind of a rectangle, narrow rectangle between 4196 and let's just say 4192. And it's been there since about six, 650 this morning, 6, 645 a.m., and it just stayed there. Then it finally went to peak A, B, C, snuck out, went to a D, had a little doji candle at the top. And then what does it do? It has a cup formation with the right side weaker than the left. Look at the MACD and stochastic. Look at the uh, look at the stochastic fading. On balance volume did pull back and then rallied. But that was a much stronger signal when the MACD deflected lower. And look what happened. And what I like to do is I'd like to do a measured move from the left side bar symmetry. I put an X in there, right there. And we went right to that X uh, one bar early, tried to bounce, went into a little mini rectangle. Couldn't break the resistance. Oh, I better make this a little bit darker. Couldn't break that midpoint resistance. 
fails at a peak A minus and kaplop. It goes back down. It goes to 41.87. And then what does it do? It rallies again. Peak A, B, C, D. This is a one-minute E-mini chart. and goes right to the resistance level, makes a cup formation, and plunges back down. Now we're making yet another rectangle formation. Look how many times it's tried to find support. I suspect at some point it's going to find the support. Um, when we're going to the bear phase, Normally, you don't get just a minus. What is the E-mini the, the e now is down four, is up four points. You get like minus 42. So until we start to see two, two consecutive days of massive moves to the downside, we are just stalling here. We're not breaking up. We're not breaking, breaking down, that is. We are coming down. Um, so this is A, B. This is A, B. That'll go to a C if it pops up a little bit. I'm watching this closely. Anyway, I wanted to show you that. That's the one-minute chart. <clears throat> uh oh, mistake. Let's move that away. And now here is the ten-minute chart. So I like to look at different time frames. Yeah, in my opening call, we have positions that go back, like the dollar back to 2018. We have positions that we've just gotten. So here's your rectangle in the ten-minute chart. It went to a peak B. There was this expanding uh, wedge formation right here. This is the falling axe, and then we broke that cone formation to the top from the 200 period moving average, made another deep, long uh, Chicago style pizza right there. I like the thin crust, I don't like the thick crust. Uh, and then I don't often have it, but anyway. And then it went, broke to the upside peak, A, B, C, D, E, F, you see the nine period moving average, went uh, from one this morning, it went positive, and it was positive all the way to this peak F. I put a question mark there, and then I was just busy preparing for the show. I forgot to change that because the one-minute chart had already given me all the information I needed. That was a down arrow. And now what we've done, and I put an X in here. It just took it right out. It went right to where? The 200-period moving average. And now look how important the two. It went right to the penny, to the 200, well, to the quarter point. 200-period moving average is trying to hold there. MACD's very weak. Stochastic's very weak, but it is getting to an area where it could try to bounce a little bit on balance volumes a week. And the next level of support will be right here if there is a break. Uh, of this low of 41.75.50. Then the next low will be the little doji candle low right there at 1 o'clock this morning, 41.72. Break that, and then we've got a different a different cup of tea altogether. So what we're looking at, that's that. Now let's go to the questions. No, I haven't finished. I have to do this first. Uh, gold, uh, GC, gold is trying to rally. It's up 13 points at 2020. Now, what happens is exactly the same thing. So the large rectangle now for the dollar, uh, I'm sorry, for gold, has become a long rectangle. So we, it's starting to lengthen. It's, 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 it's changed its pattern so that I've got to consider it's in a trading band, especially with that, um, that um, doji candle from last, the close of last week. Uh, like one evening star type thing or a hammer candle at the with a hammer at the bottom. And now what we've got is very strong technicals in the in the weekly chart. Mike MACD, stochastic at flat at 84%, nine over the 14. So I think we're in a chop, chop, chop area for gold, just digesting really good gains. Silver, so gold is up 12. Silver is up uh, 21 cents at 25.35. Made a, I, I'm calling this for now peak F. I don't see any other reason why I should change that. But it's holding very nicely. If if at any point silver contract, continuous contract, starts to trade, it can't just go there. But if it starts to trade under 21, 24.45, then I think we've we've got a, a deeper pullback. But it's still technically holding very well. High grade copper is pulling back. Uh, but now it's holding steady uh, up 0.02 at 4.086, uh, gone back into that on the on the trend line resistance and support. So this is going to be very important. How copper holds the weekly chart says it's just stuck in a range. Now this is going to be important. I had questions about C uh, SCCO. Yeah, look at that. Going to the leg D. That's what we anticipated. It's still within the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone right there, but it's just stuck its head above it in a very quick peak C to D, so <laughs> leg D, and you can see this expanding cone. Uh, I, this is a, a pennant formation in the uh, uh, SCCO. This is Southern Copper. I had a question about that. What's going on here? Okay, and the other thing that I need to look at now, I can go to the dollar. 
The dollar is uh, down 30, 30 ticks at 101.80. USD, U, USD, JPY is trading. Let me just see. Is trading down 43 uh, cents at 134.04. In leg, you're going to watch this closely. And the, uh, so that's the yen. And the EUR, USD is trading uh, up a little bit at 1.096, up 0.003. So basically what we're looking at is also kind of stuck in that range. Now there are a couple of things going on. Oh, so we did get that drop in the Dow, down, down 146. Basically it's now down 328 at that 4172 level we were looking at just a moment ago. All right, I think I've covered a chunk that, oh, a TLT, look at this, the TLT, stuck in a range, remember? If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. The Dow's down 160, 153, and the S&P is down 4.50. A big divergence there. So, Merck. So, the question was, do I, uh, do I keep unloading here? But, you know... I'm not sure how we got into the unloading on Merck. Um, it's it's holding very nicely, and I think I did this just recently. Uh, why why did I do that? That's D E. This should be a D. Yeah, that should be a D. Sorry, a D right there. Remember, I hand notate all these because I like to get the nuances. Otherwise, you're going to get something that might just have missed something that's very important. Uh, so, And that's what a computer can't pick up unless it has a very complex uh, algorithm. What I'm looking at here is um, Merck uh, has, is uh, at an all-time high. So stocks that make all-time highs tend to come back to that all-time high level 
after minor pullbacks. They're the leaders. So I like this. And one of the one of the things that I spoke about, I think it was maybe a month ago, I said, I'm looking at the IBB, which is the this is the NASDAQ, IB, IBB is a NASDAQ biotech ETF, and it's not doing that well. And you remember we looked at Moderna, and I said looking out a longer term, I like it. On a shorter term basis, it made that peak F and it's pulled back sharply, but it's a fantastic company. But walking around Watertown, just Watertown, and then wa driving down to the um, uh, downtown over the weekend, I'm looking around, the the number of huge, I don't mean just, I mean, this is not Manhattan huge, but I'm talking about for, or New York huge, but for Boston, huge buildings that are biotechs. I'm getting very worried. I think there's going to be such a glut. Something's going to happen biotech when you get this kind of building. So I think, and I you remember I spoke about it, I said the IBB is not acting anywhere close to as well as the PPH. The IBB is the Vanek, uh, sorry, that IBB is the, uh, now that's the biotech ETF, but the Van Eck pharmaceutical ETF has a much better pattern. It's gone to a peak E in the daily. It's gone to a leg D with a doji candle from last week. So this could become a peak D in the weekly. And even here, I've got this pattern that's kind of breaking out a little bit. Uh, let me see if I can join these things. Yep, I'll join those. I just like to take trend lines and say, take me to wherever you want. Just join up the ends of any of the candles, the wicks or the bodies, uh, mostly wicks, the outer wicks. Take me there and I'll deal with that because from that moment on, I have a trend line that just says visually, it's very easy to see you're in, in the inside track repellent zone right now, but at very nice recovery highs. So the Van Eck Pharmaceutical ETF is doing way better than the IBB. So Merck is in that area. Lily, Eli Lilly is in that area. The Merck had a takeover, I think, yesterday with discussion. Um, I, I think that these are companies, not only that, I think these, the pharmaceuticals, I've got a feeling, will be the ones that take over some of the, the big biotechs because they're even bigger. And as a result, I'm, I'm thinking there's this conglomeration of money that's just going towards, and you can see it, Eli Lilly, a fabulous move, all-time high just uh, recently. So I, I would be not diminishing my uh, the, the amount of money in those. I'd actually be looking to put small little bits in on any sharp pullback because it has been the leader and it should continue to be the leader and this is a dramatic change in the whole sequence of the tide. Where, where are the rip tides? Where are the low tides and high tides within different geo, geo, geo situations? In other words, looking at various, uh, what, what, we'll call them sectors for now. In this case, that's what I'm looking at. So I do like it. Then just real quickly, FXI, I've said I'm not in favor of the XI, FXI right now. I think it's kind of stalling. It has had a nice little bounce, but it's stalling at the 200 period moving average. This is the iShares China Large Cap ETF. Look at this 200-period moving average. Can't get to a leg D. Uh, it might do that, but my, this weekly chart as well is just suggesting that it's kind of stuck in a range for now. So I, I'd just be a little careful with the FXI. Next question came up as, could I look at, where was it? I wrote, SBSW. SBSW. So this is SBSW. Yeah, I can never read these things. Let me try to get closer. Uh, Stillwater, Sabanya, Stillwater Limited, Sabanya. Yeah, Sabanya, Stillwater Limited went to a peak uh, A, B, C, D in the monthly chart back to 2020, pulls back sharply, goes to peak A, B, C, D. Stalls makes a double top right here. I just did exactly the same thing on the one minute chart. This is a, a multi year, actually, multi decade. No, multi, yeah, multi decade. No, multi year. Multi year chart could be a decade. And look, look at the, the deflection of the MACD, deflection of the stochastic, and it went even lower. And now it's trying to find some support. So S, SBSW is trading very nicely right now. 
made a low. I don't even know what the price is. I'm just busy looking at my notations here. So where are we? Oh, it goes down to the sevens, bounces to a peak A, pulls back. And I just have to double check to see, is this an A right here? Uh, this is 40, 47. 47 okay so that's not so that becomes b that's another a right there this becomes an a right here that becomes a b remember this is your starting point every peak above that gets counted that's your starting point so even though that this might have gone below that it doesn't matter that's a that's a that's a that's b and the more you can get A, B, A, B below, when it finally breaks out, it is fabulous. That's called an instant restart. My CD uh, book uh, called In Introducing the Chapman Wave Methodology, we talk about this a lot. And there goes your C, and there goes your D, and now you're in a gap up, a huge gap up E. So something's happening here. Uh, Sibania, I bet he wrote and told me what it does. Uh, SBSW Awakening. More than awakening. Uh, uh, oh, I didn't see what it does. Whatever it does, it's doing very nicely now. It's gapped up. It's up 89 cents, up 10% at 949. Now, <clears throat> this particular move, so this is obviously, uh, maybe it's uh, uh, some kind of still water. Maybe it's uh, some kind of a... a, a, a Metals in the metals group because it's got overseas action where there's gaps all the way. So forget about these gaps. These gaps don't mean the same thing. Well, this is a whopper of a gap going from about nine, seven, six seventy. Is that six? No, that's eight seventy five to about nine fifty today. That's huge. So I, I like this action because it filled the gap in the monthly chart. That's not good enough. You've got to start trading way above the low of the gap. The, the, the bar before the gap down. It happens to be a weekly chart. Very unusual for a Monday to be a gap down in weekly charts. You don't often see that. It's just a, a, a coincidence. It's got nothing to do with the fact that, oh, my God, look at the gap. It's a gap because on Friday it was here and Monday is here. That's all. So that gap is important as a gap. I'm just saying the fact that it's a weekly gap is not so important. And it did go peak A in the weekly. So this has a habit. It, it's a very nice because it has a habit of going... Peak A, peak B, peak C, and at least a D. And that just tells you that's the rhythm of this thing. It does beautifully in the Chapman Wave methodology. So therefore, I've got to anticipate that this E here says that it has to hold. It's at 9.49. In the next three sessions, if it takes out 9.06, let's call it 9. If it closes under 9, that's a big negative. If it holds and goes to 9. 80. That's good action. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks, we're back. So, anyway, so thank you, uh, Duffy, SBSW, Symbania. Uh, still water limited so still water comes from the global the fact that it's now a global precious metal mining company uh, that's probably the american part of it uh, but all the rest uh, i'm looking at you these are very familiar names some of them to me it's projects are grouped with two regions the southern africa region and the americas region its products include gold platinum group battles and byproducts the company's gold project in the southern africa region includes beatrix cook Driefontein, that's what I know, I remember that very well, and Kloof, I remember that very well. Its PGM projects include Krundal, Rustenburg, Rustenburg is where my wife and I spent our, uh, our very belated, um, uh, just after, I think we were, we were married quite a few weeks, in fact, maybe months when we finally took our little honeymoon. Uh, Mimosa, Platinum Mine, it's the other projects in the Southern Africa region in Kern, Burnstone, Kloof declined, Drifontein declined, West Rand, I, we, I lived on the East Rand as a teenager, grew up as a pre-teenager in the most beautiful seapoint Cape Town, South Africa, then moved to a little mining town um, near Johannesburg. So yeah, those are familiar names. And uh, so all I can say is that this is having a fabulous session today. What's ASA? I always look at ASA mining because that's for me the a big clue. The ASA is gold, precious metals. There's five major South African mines. It's done very nicely, digesting big gains here. Uh, peak E. I'm calling it at the moment E in the weekly chart. Just about to have a. It's not even having a digestive phase. Like two days, three days of after after the big move up. Um, and it's gone way above the left side high that was made in Feb. All right, I need to do this real quickly because I, I don't want to run out of time. I promised my subscribers to my opening call. I usually spend about an hour. This last week was over an hour. For On the weekend, I, I take time to, to go through overview of what's working, what's not, the stocks we have, why we have them, what we are looking at, et cetera. Um, and I've been talking about, uh, uh, is that WT? Let me just get there. Yeah. This is, uh, did I put W? Yeah, WT's Wisdom Tree Inc. Exchange rated funds, fixed income, currencies, commodities. It's for fun. Look how nicely it's done. It's almost, uh, the, the, the last major high was back in, uh, that was June of 2021. It went to 738. Comes all the way down to the 550 area. And then actually it comes down all the way to this low right here in uh, October of 2022 to 460. And now it's trading at 649. I mean, that's a 30% gain. And what's going on if this, why is this doing so well? That's because I really believe strongly. But I did an analysis over the weekend and I just, the more I looked at things, the more bullish I got. And then I thought, okay, wait a minute. What if on Monday, you get really good good earnings, maybe JP Morgan really. What will the market do? Well, JP Morgan had fabulous earnings um, yesterday. Or was it was that Friday? No, it was yesterday, wasn't it? What is today? Today's Tuesday. That was Friday. Came out with earnings and now it's above the gap up high. 
and yet the market was down sharply. It's, it's down today. It's it's a real mixed picture, and I've got to put the two together and say you can get as bullish as you want, but there are certain factors that you cannot ignore, and that's kind of the way I'm looking at the market right now and saying what you like, you've got to have a good reason to like it, and if you like it, you've got to hold it and stick with it. Even though you might have stops, you're still going to have a lot of confidence in it. Um, the other thing is this. When I'm looking at the um, JP Morgan and today's Bank of America has given back – where did I put it? Oh, I typed it into the gen, sorry. BAC, BAC. Um, it gave back a chunk of the gain. It's now down 38 cents at 29.99. And it's acted very poorly, but a very – look, 26.32 to 30.93. Don't tell me a four-point gain uh, it was about an 18% gain in a couple of days in such a weak stock isn't something to be impressed with. But I'm only impressed when I finally see that the uh, that the whole XLF, the bank sector itself, as a unit, is able to defy the weight, the gravity of everything that's going on there to start trading not at 33.15 where it is now in leg D, but is holding strongly in his way above the daily 200 period moving average of 34.25, preferably um, in the 35.50 area and holding steady. That to me will say, okay, there's some stabilization. So this is a really mixed market uh, and you've got to be sector and stock specific. Sometimes the sector could be lousy, but a particular stock is doing well. That's the way I'm looking at it right now. So I wanted to show you that. I wanted to show you something else as well. Was that, um, I put it down. Let me see if I can find it right here. Let me just go to this, move it over so that I can go to my newsletter. Yes. So I'm um, looking at a couple of stocks. I spoke about a couple already. But look at this. Why is Builder, B-L-D-R, yes, it's pulling back. Uh, whoops. It hasn't pulled back, has it? No, not even that. Today it's up two at 96.32. Builders first source Inc. and is deeply involved in the whole building area up at an all time high as we speak at 96.42. And the and I mean, what a diverse market. Uh, what about uh, what was the other one I want to look at here was I spoke about WT. Oh, HY. I came about this yesterday and then I did some work on it. Heister Yale Materials Handling Designs, Engineers, Manufacturers, Sells, Services. Lift, tr uh, lift trucks, aftermarket parts. Isn't this fantastic to see? Um, beautiful rally in the weekly chart. This is now, uh, it's got up against a trend line. It's just broken. It. It's in a leg E in the weekly chart. MACD's good. Stochastic is good. Everything's looking very nice. And the monthly chart is starting to improve. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, gosh, there are so many things that make me ex extremely bullish. But at the same time, there's this overhang. So let me just show you the chart right now. Because I said in the, in the work that I do, the Chapman Wave dark news cloud cover is one of the most important features in my long-term outlook of the markets. The other thing is I'm looking at this incredible buildup of money and CDs and, and fixed income. Don't tell me that money isn't going to be put to work in the stock market at some time. Never in history, my history anyway, have I seen that happen. Money invariably comes out of fixed income. You remember in 2000 when um, widows and orphans, they always said, should be in bonds. And then there were grand grandparents, both female and male, that took money from fixed income and went directly not into preferred shares and then the very conservative uh, investments like a Merck and things. They went straight from that to the eyeballs, AOL, etc. Uh, money invariably goes from safety to excessivity to, to very speculative areas. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, you know what? We've got our internal low. We've got our residual low. Uh, we, we manage. We are long. We're looking at this in a positive way, long the Dow that is. Um, uh, and now what we're looking at is, are we coming back into the area that says, oops, we might be making an internal high and a residual high, even though there are so many aspects that are really very positive right now. So that's my big question. And I'll be back for the very final segment. 
before I hand you over to Steve Rhodes and all the other great guests today. Um, and I'm looking and saying, is this something? I say, yeah, I've never even heard of the materials and beautiful route. Even today, up 65 cents. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So, uh, uh, UNG, which is the United States National Gas Fund, up uh, five cents to seven point eighteen. Yes, this is much, much better action. Look, the Magnes starting to improve a lot. Stochastics improving at forty nine. It's a, it's a start to forming some kind of a base. This time, I think that we've really produced a, a base that says the six fifty to six. 27 low that was made. I'm even going to go a tad low to 620. I think should be very strong support for the next week. But this is still off that gap up yesterday, a little tiny doji and not big follow through to the upside. And even today, kind of a struggle. I, I need to see, I don't want to see the actions that we saw on the last rally. I want to see uh, where it leaves this 627 area just a lot it just leaves it goodbye and it trades and it starts to trade for a week in above 690 and preferably above a 710 and that will say to me great now the weekly chart can finally really repair some of the damage so that's it so let me just do this because we're running out of time jo is the coffee uh, I, I was I had this down a while ago and I said, oh, it's looking really good. And then I forgot to follow it up. J.O. is the iPath. It's coffee uh, trust. 
and it's doing very nicely. It's down 17 ticks uh, at 57.95. It is on a leg there. How many Ds? Look at the D that the Doji D that had that big sharp pullback from the 55 area all the way down to the 48s. And now it's up at 57. And it's in leg C in the weekly. So this is starting. Some of these commodities, and one of the reasons why our DBA, which we are still long from 2020, uh, is still at 21.18, down two cents today. But look how beautifully it's done. It's gone to a leg E. Uh, it's broken out of the rectangle formation. That's important. So, folks, if by the end of the day, the Dow starts, instead of being just down minus 50 by the by 3.30 this afternoon, is down 210 or more, that's going to say we're starting to get this topic action. Just be respectful of that. But the tactics are still very strong. Have a great rest of the day. Stay tuned for Steve Rhodes. Check out my opening call daily newsletter. See you later with Tom.